As we keep this season of Advent, we celebrate the way in which God kept his promises to his ancient people in the coming of Jesus. And we look ahead to the time when God will fulfill his whole purpose when Jesus comes again. Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 and 2. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn. This passage was quoted by Jesus himself in his inaugural sermon, if that's what it was, in Nazareth, as in Luke chapter 4. And people have often associated it, therefore, with the start of Jesus' ministry, but it goes back, as in Isaiah, to the great Isaianic Advent hope. Because in this section of the book of Isaiah, as in the two previous sections, there is a sense that what God is going to do is going to be done through the work of a particular individual. As you read the book of Isaiah, it's long and has some difficult passages, but it divides broadly into three. In the first 39 chapters, we have the vision of God doing what he does in relation to his ancient people Israel, but with flickers of hope that there will come a king through whom God will do this, particularly in Isaiah chapters 9 and 11. Then in the middle section of the book, Isaiah 40 to 55, we have the promise of comfort and restoration, the promise that God will return in glory. But in the middle of that, we have the figure of the servant. And there are four poems, which we know loosely as the servant songs, about the servant of the Lord, who will be the embodiment of the arm of the Lord. So that when we say, how will God do all this stuff? The answer is, behold my servant. That's how it's going to be done. And now in this third section of the book, very much the Advent section, and the, the last 10 chapters through to, to the end of the book, we have this strange figure who is both a warrior and one who brings comfort, one who wins God's victory over the powers of darkness, but who then turns in this chapter and says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to bring liberty to the captives, to comfort those who mourn and so on. And in this section, as in chapter 11, it's the work of the Spirit enabling this particular royal figure to do the work which God has promised will be done. So the Advent hope is a Trinitarian hope. It's that God the Father will send this strange royal figure equipped with the Spirit to bring about the restoration that he has promised. The restoration of his ancient people, though that doesn't take the form they expected. The return of God himself, though that doesn't take the form they expected. And then the new work that is to be done, actually not just for Israel, but for the wider world. And that too didn't take the form they they expected. This is part of the tension of Advent, and it's a tension which we feel in our own lives again and again, that we think we know where we're supposed to be going if we're prayerfully trying to follow God's way and God's will. And then God does something which takes us by surprise. Sometimes it's a painful shock, sometimes it's a tragedy or, or some horror that happens to us or our people or our country or whatever. God somehow is going to work through that and out the other side to do new things which we had not imagined. And as I read this passage and I think of Jesus preaching that inaugural sermon in Nazareth, claiming that he was the one through whom this Advent hope was to be fulfilled, I then see that message stretching out ahead because when Jesus says the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, he also says to his followers later on that the Spirit of the Lord will be upon them. So the Advent hope turns into the Advent vocation, that when we read this, we should say, what does it look like now for us to be people of hope for the world, like Jesus was the man of hope for the people of his day? What would it look like for us to be the one bringing good news to the oppressed, bringing comfort to those who mourn, binding up the brokenhearted and, re and giving release to the prisoners and proclaiming the year of the Lord's favor? 
What would it look for us like for us to be jubilee people saying, this is the time when God is going to do a new thing? Because the ultimate new thing that God will do when he makes the new heavens and new earth and raises his people from the dead is constantly to be anticipated in the power of the Spirit in the present time. So if we are to be Advent people, people of hope, let us also be Advent people, people of the vocation of hope for God's whole world. That's how it is that we are to be ourselves, people bringing light into this dark time of the year. And so we pray, Almighty Father, give us your spirit, we pray, the spirit which equipped and enabled Jesus himself to be the man of hope for his people. Enable us to be people of hope in and for your world, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We know many of you have enjoyed our weekly devotional series. May I ask that you consider making a donation to help this teaching ministry continue in 2024. You can visit the links in the description below to make your gift of any amount during this Advent season. Thank you for your support.